Yeah. Good, yeah. good. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so our technicals are good. Don, you're good. Megan, you're good, right? Yes. <laughs> good, super. I'm good. Okay, I'm just letting one more person in. <laughs> All righty. Okay, we're good. All right. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm really excited for this event. Um, my name is Megan Cahill Asenza, and I'm WWBA Events and Media Director for the Walt Whitman Birthplace. Birthplace. We are a museum which is located in Huntington, Long Island, New York. We offer tours in person and virtually of the house that Walt Whitman was born 202 years ago. During this event, I will be posting links and um, there will be a link for anyone who's, you know, would like to donate to our museum. And now I'm gonna pass it off to Cynthia Shore, who is our director of the museum. Thank you, Megan. Uh, and thank you for all the good work that you're doing and all the technical support we're getting out there. I'm Cynthia Shore, the executive director of the Walt Whitman Birthplace Association. And it gives me great pleasure to welcome you from all over the world, this international group put together by our wonderful WWBA poet in residence, George Wallace. George, thank you so much. If we could do a big applause for you now, uh, we could do that. You have been amazing with our own poetry groups and certainly putting this Poets Building Bridges World Poetry Day 2022 Triangulation Project together. Uh, my hat's off to you and to all the poets that are with us today and in the weeks to come. I uh, welcome uh, Ian, I see a few familiar names and Tom, our musician. And I welcome all of the wonderful poets again from around the world. I am listening with great anticipation and certainly this is something that we need in today's climate. We need to build bridges. So thank you very much. I will turn it over to George and again say, George, thank you. And uh, on with the show. Beautiful. Okay. Megan, to me, or do you have anything else that you'd like to, oh, put everybody on mute unless you're gonna be actually speaking. Yeah? Yes. That's a technical thing. Yes. <clears throat> Welcome. Right. Welcome to you all, all of you here with us today at, uh, on the Zoom itself, which uh, includes uh, uh, 12, approximately 12 people who are going to be performing today from, from the UK, from various places in uh, representing South America, from New York City, and uh, the staff and some board members from the World of Birthplace, which is our host today for the first of six days, individual days in March, is World Triangulation Project, Poets Building Bridges. March 5th, March 6th, March 12th, 13th, 19th, and 20th. Crazy, wild, big concept, which um, you know grew to this thing, and we were the first one today, so we're gonna kick it off, and, and, uh, and I'm really uh, I'm delighted that uh, to have the people we have with us today, because there's some outstanding, uh, uh, artists and performers with us. And uh, just a general concept, as Cynthia mentioned, of, uh, of reaching out at this particular time in world history, I think is really critical. So I'm humbled to uh, you know come up with this idea and see you all run with it and be part of it. So thank you for that. Um, world Triangulation Day project today includes, as I say, representatives from the southeastern portion of the UK, Suffolk, where I used to live at one point in time, led by compare Ian Griffiths. Uh, from Barranquilla, but representing several countries um, in, uh, in South America, Argentina, Colombia, and Mexico, as well as Argentina, Colombia, Mexico, and what other, Maria, Peru? Well, anyway, a couple of countries, and she'll tell you the details. You know, is Maria, Del Castillo Susakia. So she's here with us today. So welcome. And of course, myself, I'll be um, introducing the New York City performers and poets. 
only to say that uh, there are some other people who are going to be performing with us um, in future days. I think uh, uh, Tony Policano and, uh, and, um, and Francine Witt and Patricia Carrigan and Peter Kozlowski and maybe some others. I, I'm not gonna, the screen's really big. So <laughs> oh, Tanya Kohan is going to be representing from Los Angeles. It's going to be representing, is going to be comparing the, a group from uh, uh, the Korean diaspora. So it's a tremendous uh, series of events every Saturday and Sunday for the next six of them at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's quite a stretch because, you know, for example, you know, we're going to have people from as far away as India on one day. So that's a couple of number of hours ahead. And from Korea on another day, which is a number of hours behind. So in order to accommodate people in, in time zones so that they can participate without having to get up in the middle of the night and address us in pajamas, you know, we have uh, tried to find the best optimal time for, which is this time, 10 o'clock. So um, this is uh, how good we're gonna have happen. Nice to see you all. If you're gonna be seeing this on uh, streamed on Facebook, welcome. If you're gonna be seeing this on a YouTube, you can see the YouTube um, version of this from a couple of different sources, which um, I will put on chat, but it's also, we'll put it on uh, on Facebook so you know how to find this show and all of the shows afterwards uh, on YouTube. And that's courtesy of Don Krieger from Cultivating Voices. Thank you for that. I think that covers the basis. What I'll do now is very quickly, I'm going to introduce you to to um, Ian Griffiths, who will pre present the block of poets and the musician from, uh, from the UK. Now we know Ian Griffiths from a couple of locations here in New York. We, I performed with him up in Woodstock and he's been out to the world of birthplace for those of you who would have had this show here. He's been with us at the Gray Weather for Media's event at the Parkside as well. So, I mean, he's uh, not a stranger to, to New York at all world traveler really, Ian Griffiths, former chairman of the Suffolk Poetry Society, originally from South Wales, big Dylan Thomas, aficionado, and now he's living in East Anglia, performs widely. So uh, he's our guest compare for the group of, uh, of people, and I'm going to let you uh, put your hands together for Ian Griffiths now for Suffolk UK. Put your hands together. Thank you. Uh, there we are. I've unmuted myself. There we go. All right. Well, fantastic. Thank you, George. What an incredible project. This is um, such a wonderful idea. And what, what a great job you've done. Um, you know, the concept of trying to uh, traverse languages, national barriers, and, and not least time zones and the technical technicalities. Thank you all. Um, it's a great privilege to um, um, have my team representing just some of the wonderful poets we have in East Anglia uh, with me tonight. So um, I will go through them all as they, as they come on and, and uh, do their pieces. So I'm going to kick this thing off. Um, it seems an incredibly um, a portentous time, an appropriate time to be doing this kind of thing. And I just want to tell you as a short introduction to this first uh, poem that way back in 1995, I was doing my own kind of poetic bridge. Um, I went to work in, in uh, Russia, in Moscow. Uh, my, I was doing uh, work making hotels and restaurants there, but really my objective was to put myself in touch with Russian poetry which if any of you have been experienced, it is, is really fantastic. And um, yeah, I was, of course there are good and bad people everywhere, but I was met by, um, if I suffered from anything, it was just uh, incredible hospitality and um, quite a lot of vodka as well. Anyway, so uh, th this poem started off as just, um, um, I wrote it a long time ago. I had no idea of what was gonna be happening when I read it tonight. But sometimes as it happens with poems, they gain, um, they gain a meaning long after, or extra meanings long after they are written. So this started off really as uh, a night in a pub 
in Moscow. Rosie's Bar. There are words of Russian in this, you won't have to worry about uh, understanding them. I think you'll get their meaning. Давай, давай, пойдем. It's in Patrick's night in Moscow. And we're down at Rosie's Bar. Rosie's at the end of the day, at the end of the week. Let's raise a glass to Rosie, to St. Patrick's Day in Moscow. Shamrock, Guinness and vodka, давай, давай, let's go. Yes, Rosie's. Come in off the street. Na ulitsa, na plotit, na revoluci, na biblioteca. Come in from the squares, come in from the cold, you old ladies with lavender, smelling of socks, the stench and the smoke, drunkards singing to lampposts, the garbage fires, the rotting bananas, babushka, mimosa, Ukraine. Davai, davai, come in, why not join us? Why not with your carrier bags? Find a friend in the Moscow night. I'll be your friend in the Marlborough smog. U vas je spitschki da? Da, da. Till your lungs explode, till your voice is hoarse. Kasiva ya, spasiba, spasiba. Davai, you are always welcome at Rosie's. Tell Rosie your woes. Sink your head on her breasts till the tears dry. Till the silence comes, till your vision fades. Davai, davai. Now Adam's come back from the gents with a moustache the colour of snow, a drip on the end of his nose, his eyes rivers of tears, but he's getting the vodkas in. Yes, the drinks are on him. Nezdorovia, Vestorovia. It's St. Patrick's night in Rosie's. And vodkas fly down the bar. Stalichnaya, Krasivaya, they pour down your throat. Nezdorovia, Vashdorovia, a torrent of fire to set us ablaze. We're Adam's friends, Drugoi, Druzia. And Andy's got chatting to Baikal, and Siberia's arms around Stu. She would like to visit London, and she knows what Stu likes to do. And Mac is sat in the corner with a girl he's only just met who whispers Lubov, 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 Maya, Maya Golubchik. And I'm crying. Oh, Mac, please don't do it. Please, Mac, don't do it again. Lubov, Lubov, Golub, Maya. Don't do it, Mac, don't do it. Now Spitchki has taken my hand and he holds it over a flame. He looks in my eyes, spitchy, reeking of Marlborough, of leather and gold. He searches my face for what he might find. Perhaps someone who will trust him. Perhaps someone who feels pain. Может быть, может быть. There's fun to be had in the Moscow night and it's St. Patrick's Day in Rosie's bar and Rosie knows pleasure and Rosie knows pain. And in Rosie's bar, it's one and the same. Hey, English, you are my brother. Hey, English, you are my friend, my drug. Hey, I like you. Nazdrobia, Vestrobia. Please, hey, I buy you a drink. Das Vidania, drug moi. Das Vidania. Good night, my friend. Farewell. Dasvidanya, Rosie's bar, Vashtorovia, Stolichnaya, Dasvidanya, Babushka, Siberia, Mimosa, Ukraina. A gulp in the throat of the metro, Pushkinskaya, Moskovskaya. Take care in the Moscow night. Izvenitia, take care. Izvenitia, Dveri zakrivajaca, sleduša stancija, ohotni jet, ohotni jet, ohotni jet, tara, 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 tara. Thank you. Wonderful.
So one, one more um, poem quickly now, which at times when people are apart from this is a quite different sort of poem. It's a love poem to the people we're apart from. Dearest love, what light is it discovers you this wet spring morning? What kind of room holds you and keeps you from my side? What exotic birds sing in your trees? How do the pillows smell beneath your sleeping head? Fine woven veils of rain drive up the estuary and promise night before the end of day. If I could swim the sea that rocks this shore, would I one day wash up on your beach beneath a powerful sun and find and hold you in my dripping arms and kiss your sweetest lips? The robins in the garden blast their songs from every bush in order to attract their mate. Whilst I, to do the same within my wooden shed, tap keys before a glowing screen. The internet has told light showers and rain, but hail has come and silenced all the birds and hammers on the roof to be let in. Whilst crests drive up the estuary, air roars, Thunder of great engines rack a sombre sky. Send me your sunshine from wherever it is you are. Send me your sweet words, sweet with mango. Send me your letter with a frigate bird. Send me your warm smile and my day will shine again. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you all. Um, I'm now going to pass you on to uh, Nick Stone who's going to um, perform some music for us. So over to you, Mick, Nick. <clears throat> Nick, I think you need to uh, unmute yourself or uh, be unmuted. Mute. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. When he when he asked me to do this, I started thinking about the links between music and uh, and words. And um, one of the most obvious links is is the architecture. And and this building bridges obviously leads into it. And so with words, you need the architecture of language, of grammar, of uh, punctuation. And with music, you need architecture too. So this. Uh, chosen a very simple architecture, which for those of you who aren't musicals is based on the key of C and C, D, E, F, G, A, B are the notes in the scale of C. And if we take the second, first, second and fifth, not in that order, we end up with. And that goes round and round forever if you want it to. I promise I won't play it forever. So I've got a little looper pedal that had a drum track on it and I laid down a bass line. Something like that. And then I can play across the top of it. So here's my backing that I put together. Hope you can hear that. I can play.
shit will go on for an hour. Lovely. Thank you very much indeed, Nick Stone, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Well, now I'm going to uh, pass you on, there she is, um, to the wonderful Alexandra Davis there, who is a teacher and these things need to start, start young. So she does the most fantastic job uh, with children, teaching uh, poetry and literature with children. And that's when it started to, for me, certainly when I was at school, those first teachers of poetry are so important. And uh, um, yeah, well, I'm not going to say any more. Wonderful poet, so pleased that she was able to join us when I know she's got a lot of other things going on today. So I'm going to hand you on now to Alexandra Davis. Thank you, Ian. Louder than words. He made 15 cups of tea in one morning. Each time he offered, she said yes. And so he'd retreat to the well-worn kitchen, the limped limbed mug tree, the toiling kettle, place her empty cup on the side. She drank 15 cups of tea that morning because love infused the gesture. While his tired exhalations mingled with the steam, the martyred milk completed the gift. If he offered 100,000 teas each time, she would say, yes, please. <laughs> when you come from the UK, you have to start with a cup of tea. Um, a lot of romance between couples gets diverted into one's children when one builds a family and these have become some of the most important bridges, particularly over the last two years. Here is a poem uh, about one of my sons when he was younger. It's called White Dreams. White is your favourite colour. Hidden in that is who you are and who you intend to become. Your heavy gold head rests here at twilight when I get to know you, stranger, son. We finish reading Now We Are Six and you learn the end by heart. Your sense of that path you skip along, strong and fearless in six short years. I catch myself believing in your dreams. Nightly, we discuss your 18th birthday when I will buy you mountain boots and crampons, a word you taught me. Google prompts feverish joy, each terrible spike armoring the soul like a luminous stegosaurus to see how high you will go. While I was reading of Christopher Robin imagining dragons with Binker, your mind was akimbo in ice clad elsewhere, planning, devising an awesome gap year in alien costume footwear. It should be funny, this recurring white request. In order to meet a snow white seal pup, witness the whiteness of a bear like yours, you will also require a white snowsuit, just like the one I brought you home in that February morning, raw from birth. For now the earth is yours, a polar pearl, worthy of admiration and conquest like a bride, the Arctic, dreamy desert clothed in white, waiting for you at the end of any aisle. This next poem is about making sure those bridges stay open when your children go to dark places so they can return. The Isle. Returning from Krakow after four days, he looks pale, his eyes red and tired. The school trip has gone well to Auschwitz-Birkenau and now he hates me. Clipped answers tell me has, he has slept, eaten, showered, been polite. They were looked after, the beds warm, the weather cold, the food cheap. The space between us is longer than the dining table because I let him go. I should have known he would now wish he had not gone or I should have been there. So he could have blamed me at the time instead of having to be his own mother, ill-equipped, cowering in a corner of his terrified mind. Across the gulf, I cannot reach to touch him. I ask, what was the worst thing you saw? Because I have to meet him there somehow, hold him, too tall, his face rougher than I remember, and take his weight 
near some twisted exhibit. He takes a breath, prepares. He wants me there. He talks of a long room with a narrow aisle that he walked. On either side, behind the glass, the deep cavity from floor to roof stuffed full of human hair. And his eyes are now melting tears and his voice is shouting, cracking with swallowed sobs because he is still a child and I was not there and the air blurs as if to prove that I missed it. I find him now, my grieving boy, trace his neat parting I've been shaping here for 14 years, touch his double crown, smooth his hair. Soon he stands, his burden slightly eased. He does not blame me now. I have finally done my job. I have been to Krakow. My next poem is a tribute to my grandparents who have always been incredibly important to me and are particularly special in my thoughts today. It's called Ingot. <laughs> I remember overhead discussions about the acquisition, serious and furtive as if they were drunk on fairy dust. My father would make the purchase on his Saudi trip. My grandfather shook his hand, puffed out his small chest, a sparrow pretending to be a goldfinch. They could afford 10 grams. The weight was paramount, its purity guaranteed. It would hang from her neck, an emblem of status, of hard graft, of a little Del Boy swank. Everyone was rather pleased with themselves back then. So I knew the word ingot from a young age. A smooth oblong bar with the face of Fortuna, like a dazzling sea maiden, serene in profile, with her grain and coins spilling from her headdress, the crest of their retirement, their harvest. On the reverse, the provenance and assay, four nine spine and Swiss, solid bullion truth. My grandmother wore it often drenched in youth dew, exotic at parties, like an old Cleopatra dripping gold. Her hair never greyed, the ingot never tarnished, just seemed a shade too bright against her ashening skin. My mother got her cameos, those strange translucent ladies. I don't know who got the opals, too much milk, too little fire. I got the ingot small heavy slab of satisfaction, like a plundered chunk of cheese or slathered butter, as she was before she thinned to whey and water. And finally, there is still plenty of romance and room for it in our house. This is stag, I'll finish with this. I need to make one thing clear. I didn't see the stag, my husband did. He'd been running. He came through the door, eyes alight, stood taller in the kitchen, his legs rooted wide to tell us both, his joy so urgent. Son and I sat, wrapped by the boy in his voice, the wild life in his hands and his face, as he drew us a picture of man and stag who had met in the field this bright autumn morning. He lifted his arms in revelation, the size, the size of his antlers, the span, the height, the throat on him. He was praising the moment, too big for the kitchen, and we praised it too, for the gift of the stag now belonged to us all, that glimpse of the creature briefly rewilded, its beauty and might to be breathed becoming before us a blur of bristles and musk. Thank you very much. Wonderful, thank you so much, Alex. You've uh, crossed the Atlantic and more this day, uh, brought the stag home for sure. I'm so glad you finished with that one, that's great. Thank you. So uh, I'm now going to uh, hand you over to Ivor Murrell, a uh, stalwart, shall we say, of and the and genuine man from this part of the world because I'm a bit of a fraud hanging out over here on the east coast as I'm from uh, South Wales. So Ivor Merrill, um, can I hand over to you, sir? Thank you, Ian. Hello, everyone. Um, the main theme of uh, this event is building bridges. And why do we build bridges? Well, 
We want to go across them. We want to go somewhere else. We want to experience other things. We want to travel. And that's one of the loves of my life has been to travel. And I've been lucky enough to, to be able to go to many countries in the world. And so I've picked two short poems um, on travel. And this first one is from South America, from the marsh, central marsh areas of Venezuela. And it's called Fashioned by Local Conditions. Take the snake, he said, both wrists cuffed by the writhing coils. He had picked it up from the drying mud to move it to damper safety. I didn't move. Although the snake was small, it offered no obvious handhold, and its fangs had found his hand deep behind the thumb. Take the snake! With a tone of entreaty, he offered it to the driver and his helper, whose laughter caused the young anaconda to flex and twist the manacles. Amidst this raucous and wild response, the words blurted from me, it's biting him! Silence, a slowly writhing snake and silence. The driver rolled up his sleeve to bear a learner's tapestry of scars with thick uneven stitches. Not to be outdone, his mate pulled up a trouser leg, unveiling jagged ornamental flesh, livid as if fresh from a blacksmith's forge, tokens from more brutal meetings. Briefly, I sensed an alien savagery within the Venezuelan marsh. And from another part of the world, this is offshore of the island of Langkawi in Malaysia, but you'll see what the connection is immediately. Save my snake! An arm rose from the sea and thrust into the stranded boat a wet and frightened boa constrictor that quickly wrapped around my wrist. Calm it, the guide said. I forgot it in my pocket. Resuming his sodden task in the dusk, dislodging the boat from the sandbank. I know the snake calmed first, but in my defense, I would claim it had the lesser shock. <laughs> Thank you so now much. From, just from travel, I've got one final short poem. We've right. got a problem in this country at the moment with a government that uh, habitually lies to us. Um, and uh, we, we, we are, we are experiencing problems with that. And the people of Russia seem to be experiencing a similar absence of truth at the moment. So this last poem, this last short poem is called, When Did You Last See Truth? When did you last see truth? It has slipped its leash and scrambled off, unnoticed in the fraying melee of baying media. When did you last hear truth? Its studied quietness is difficult to catch amidst the raging howl of primed prejudice. Truth, truth, if we shout, will you hear us and come back? Will you find us through the false tracks? Will we still recognize truth? An almost forgotten narrative, misplaced misused, misnamed alternative. Thank you, Ian, that's it for me. If you Thank want to you hear- so much. If you want to hear a few more, there's plenty more on my website, versifier.co.uk, and it's all free. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much, Ali. That was great. And thank you all my Suffolk uh, poets there and um, Nick as well. Thank you all for taking part this afternoon. That was great. And, you know, now we're into this. I'm really getting a feel for this business. So thanks, George. I'm passing it back to you, sir.
let's see if we can transact this. Everybody take yourself off mute for a second and uh, give these people a round of applause from the UK for joining us today. Thank you. Now put yourself back. back. <laughs> <laughs> Great, Great. Thank you. Thank you. you know, some people who've joined us who are going to be in for next um, some of these sessions. I see uh, Lola Kujaki. She's going to be representing the Armenian uh, diaspora. We have um, uh, Patricia with both. Karen Newberg is here now. Thank you for joining us, Karen. Um, and that may be uh, the others that have joined us. Carol Lawrence, I want to give a special shout out to Ian Griffith's better half, really. You know, she has an art show coming up March 24th in the UK. So watch out for that. So thank you all from the UK, Ian, Nick, Ivor, and uh, Alexandra. Thank you so much for joining us. Now I'll turn it over immediately to Maria del Castillo Susacia, Susacia, and I'll tell you very quickly about her. She uh, multilingual translator, bilingual poet herself, Spanish and English. I won't even bother to mention all the language she translates out of and into at this point because it's voluminous. But she's from Barraquilla. Colombia. She's the compare for the group from uh, Argentina, Colombia, and Mexico today. So um, she also recently established something called Reed, or she should pronounce it Red Carpet Colombia, R E A D, which is a Facebook group uh, which has so many of her uh, activities and activities that she helps to, to organize and, and is a part of around the world, really. I recommend that to you. So here is Maria del Castillo Susakia. Hey everybody. Thanks to the artists who just heard for being here and to all those who have made this part possible. Especially my friend and poet, George, whose poetic word I love very much. Thank you for placing your truth in my organization with Carpet Colombia. I'm going to introduce you to the group of Hispanic artists. Person one, Manuel Iris, a Mexican, Mexican, Mexican poet living in the United States, is a poet laureate emeritus of Cincinnati and member of Art Creators National System from Mexico. Received the Merida National Award of Poetry in Mexico for his book, Notebook of Dreams. Hi, Manuel. Hello, Maria. Thank you so much for- Happy well, to first, have you here. I am, I am very happy to be here. Can you all hear me? Yes. Fine. I am very happy to be here. It is, it is an honor also uh, to be in this uh, gathering um, and among you and after uh, listening such uh, beautiful work. Um, I'm going to read a couple of poems and I have to tell you that I'm going to cheat because I'm going to read every poem twice. I will read my poems in English first and then I will read them in Spanish, which is the original language in which I write. All of the poems that I'm going to read today come from my latest collection, which is called The Parting Present, eh, Lo Que Se Irá, that was published at the same time in Mexico and in the United States. Um, these are poems that talk about many things, but today, I'm gonna read poems um, that talk about the experience of being a, an immigrant poet and more specifically an immigrant poet that is a father. I started writing this book uh, when my daughter wasn't born yet. She's now three years old. And all of the process of watching her be in the world and becoming every day more what she is um, mesmerized me and made me write poems. The first poem is called Witness and talks precisely about my daughter, my daughter not being born yet. Witness, your daughter is dancing, says my wife, touching her belly. For the past five months, I've been a witness of what happens there under her hands. My wife is a house inside my house 
and I am outside of my own heart. I am sure she's happy, she says. And I would give up poetry in exchange for having inside me, my daughter, for feeling that dance that bonds them to all beginnings. But that option does not exist and I do what I can. Cooking, fulfilling cravings, writing a poem in which I say what I can see from this side of the skin in which mystery embodies itself. And I testify with loving envy that an everyday miracle is a miracle and nothing less. Testigo. Está bailando tu hija, dice mi esposa y se toca la barriga. Desde hace varios meses soy testigo de lo que sucede ahí, debajo de sus manos. Mi esposa es una casa dentro de mi casa y yo estoy fuera de mi propio corazón. Seguro está contenta, dice, y yo sería capaz de renunciar a la poesía a cambio de tener dentro de mí a mi hija, de sentir la danza que las une a todos los principios. Pero la opción no existe y hago lo que puedo. Cocinar, solucionar antojos, escribir el poema en el que digo lo que veo desde este lado de la piel en que se encarna el misterio. Y testimonio con amorosa envidia que un milagro tantas veces repetido es un milagro y nada menos. Um, the following poem, if we, if we follow a timeline, this is a poem when my daughter was born and I wanted to welcome him to the world. This poem is called Letter to My Newborn Daughter to Help Her Christen the World. Now that the world is brand new, I want to go out to the balcony with you and tell you this is a tree, this is a leaf, and that jumping on that branch is a fruit, a bird, a flower, is the song of the bird, it is the air. But someday you're going to ask me about love and war, of love, of hope and death, of why we came to be born precisely now, precisely here, and those answers I also ignore. Instead, I offer you my little certainties. Everything is inside if you pay attention to the little things. There is more truth in an embrace than in a book. Everything in the world is dark and vital, like a root, beautiful and destructive, like a wildfire. You must live without fearing death, your own or others. We needed to return to the beginning. Now that the world is completely new, I give you also these two amulets so you can save them or wear them in your hair. Silence is music. I love you. Carta a mi hija recién nacida para ayudarla a inaugurar el mundo. Ahora que el mundo es completamente nuevo, quiero salir contigo al balcón y decirte, esto es un árbol, esto una hoja, y eso que brinca encima de esta rama es una fruta, un pájaro, una flor, es la canción del pájaro, es el aire. Pero algún día vas a preguntarme del amor y la guerra, la esperanza y la muerte, del por qué venimos a nacer precisamente ahora, precisamente aquí, y esas respuestas yo también las desconozco. En su lugar te ofrezco mis pequeñas certezas. Todo está a la vista si prestas atención a las cosas pequeñas. Hay más verdad en un abrazo que en un libro. Todo, el mundo, todo en el mundo es oscuro y vital como raíz, hermoso y destructivo como un incendio. Debes vivir la vida sin temer a la muerte, tuya o ajena. Es necesaria para volver al inicio. Ahora que el mundo es completamente nuevo, te regalo también estos dos amuletos para que puedas guardarlos o llevarlos en tu pelo. El silencio es la música. Te yeah. amo. And I'm going to close with a shorter poem about now um, the fear of every immigrant parent. I didn't know which language was my daughter going to talk. It's called the language of the house. Sometimes I am afraid that you will talk in the language in which I cannot dream. 
I almost always wish that you leave first the language of the house, the one in which I lulled you to sleep, in which I imagined you telling me your things. You still do not know that there is a different music outside. Lately, I've been afraid of the months because you were born here in this place, in this language in which I am a foreigner. And I want to live in your world, in the language that you will have within your words. I am afraid that you will also know the impossibility of belonging, that you will build your own homeland like anyone else. If someone asks you, where are you from? Tell them that you came from your father's heart, a heart that will learn any language to talk to you. El idioma de la casa. A veces tengo miedo de que hables el idioma en el que no puedo soñar. Casi siempre deseo que primero vivas el idioma de la casa, el mismo en que te arrullo, en el que te imagino platicándome tus cosas. Todavía no distingues que afuera hay otra música. Últimamente tengo miedo de los meses porque tú has nacido aquí, en este sitio, en este idioma en el que soy un extranjero. Y yo quiero vivir dentro de tu mundo, del idioma que tendrás, de tus palabras. Me da miedo que conozcas la imposibilidad de pertenecer, pero te harás tu patria, como cualquiera. Si te preguntan de dónde eres, diles que has venido del corazón de tu padre, de un corazón que aprendería cualquier idioma para hablar contigo. Thank you. Gracias. Maria, you're on mute. Sorry. Thank you so much, Manuel. Very touching points. That was so tender. Thank you so much. Person two, Argentinian poet, journalist, and he said Carolina Samudio, style communication, public affairs, is current director of the Ceros Cultural Foundation and Ceros magazine. Hello, Carolina. How are hello. you? Hi, hello, everyone. What uh, a joy to hear you. You cannot hear me. Right. Yes, I can. Ah, you can. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I am very happy to be here with you almost 1 p.m. in Uruguay, Montevideo, where I live. Uh, I am very thank you very happy because of this invitation. I do not speak English so frequently, so I will try to do my best. I hope you understand me. Uh, I, I was thinking that, you know, I have two daughters and they study here in the British school and they, they would be very, very helpful for me to have them here, but obviously they don't want to, to be here with me. Uh, so I will try to, to read my, my poems first in Spanish and then in English. I hope you understand. Uh, if not, as, a, as I will do with you, I will try to find your, your poetry in, in internet or wherever, and then read you uh, slowly to, to try to, to, to keep your poetry more detailed. So uh, I will start uh, reading Spanish, my poems. Uh, this poem uh, belongs to a book that was published uh, seven years ago, I think, in New York by Arte Poetica Press, who uh, is um, Carlos Oaxaco, a Colombian poet, runs this, 
Project a Raido. Quizás sea un roble con aroma eucalipto, cuyas raíces son ramas que tanto anclan un fondo como rozan una cúpula. Exilios ciertos y hazañas tengo. La casa es campo de batalla, el cuerpo es la casa. Alma, espíritu y vacío habitan en ella. A veces, en el silencio humeante que presagia los sueños, me paro ante mí y pido. Casi siempre me obedezco. Alguna vez, quizá, plante un árbol ahí donde mueren las palabras. Por ahora me conformo con ser durazno y que su piel desgarres. Hija de una tierra que tanto me crece como me carcome, rama de un tronco que se deshilacha lerdo, fruto del fruto de una y otras ramas que crecen desordenadas, profusas, jardinera del desarraigo, quizá alguna vez yo misma plante ese árbol. Roots. It may be a eucalyptus essence of tree, whose roots are branches which mourn a bottom as well as brush a dome. And whether the banishments I have not exploit to talk about. The house is a battlefield. The body is the house. So, speak and backing during it. Sometimes in the smoke and silence, having heard of dreams, I stand before me and pray. I almost always obey myself. Someday I may plant a tree there where the words go to die. For now, I resign myself to being a pitch and that you may tear its skin. Daughter of a land that both make me free and eats me away, a branch from a trunk that slowly ravels, the fruit of a fruit from one and other branches growing disorderly, largely, gardener of and doing, I myself may someday plant that tree. It was not easy at all for me. I am very sorry. <laughs> That was beautiful. You did very good. Okay, so I, I will follow now with the um, Teoria sobre la belleza, that means theory of beauty. I will read uh, Fred in Spanish. La belleza no cabe en un trozo de papel, si en los ojos, como ajustar el enfoque de una lente por detrás. No en la punta de la lengua, más allá. Cabe en el aire al abarcar el ser. Puede asirse la belleza en silencio al reposar el cuerpo desde atrás en eso de ser, atesorar lo que haya sido y bello es. La belleza habita en la oscuridad, el don que nos fue dado oculto, la cáscara que se quita, lo bello es un fin vacío de principios, nace en el último tramo del próximo deseo. La belleza abraza la luz de la muerte o desata la nebulosa de la vida. Theory of Beauty 
beauty does not fit on a piece of paper, although it good in the eyes, how to adjust the focus of a lens from behind, not on the tip of the tongue, far beyond. It fits in the air, embracing the self. Beauty may be size in silence while dressed in the body from behind at the very moment of being, treasuring what has been beautiful and still is. Beauty lives in darkness, the gift that was given to us concealed, the rhyme which is being filled. Beauty is an end lacking beginnings. It's worn in the last stretch of the next desire. Beauty embrace the life of death or unlashes the stardust of life. was even more difficult. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so I think I will read the, the last one. That it, it is the, the same the same book. Uh, really it is the only book I have in, in published in both uh, languages. And the name of the book is The Darkness of What Shines. And this Poem I will I will read it is the center and the end. So I go first in Spanish. Uno. El último abrazo antes de la primera muerte, el franco coqueteo con la locura, la vez que el amor fue un pozo absoluto como el cosmos, el aliento originario de un más allá difuso de la única verdad que es el nacimiento. Sí. Dos. La vida no está allá ni entonces. La vida es esta, este aliento, esta piel, esta sensación de pozo seco, de colmena abandonada, de centro y de fin. Tres. El vacío tiene el peso de lo absoluto, nunca menos, centro. El vacío es la medida del mundo. The center and the, and the end. One. The last embrace before, before the first to the can be filtration with madness while, while making love and it was an absolute way, well, like the universe, the primordial breath from the back hereafter of the only truth, which is that to life is not there, or even then, this is life, this breath, this skin, this feeling, of being like a dry well, forsaken behind the center and the end. Three, the boy has the way of the absolute, nevertheless, the center, the bar is the measure. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you so much, Carolina. Can you please show us again uh, your book cover, please? For sure. Yes. It's here. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. I think that that uh, it, it is on at the Poetica Press, so I don't know, but it is also on the web. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Person three. Born in Barranquilla, Northern Colombia, Carol, eh, Talula Flores 
poet and translator who did her master's degree in linguistics at mm -hmm. St. Paulo College, New York State University, is co-founder of Poema Rio, mm -hmm. the International Poetry Festival in the Caribbean. Hello, Talula. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm very glad to Welcome. be here uh, with you. Uh, well, just a few words I have been thinking uh, for this moment. As we all know, uh, poetry is about transgression. So uh, building bridges like the one uh, we are raising today, not only enriches our views, but also should give us the strength we need to conserve justice when the word justice has become meaningless. I would like to express my thanks to George Wallace and Maria and to extend a very special greeting to all poets here today building bridges. Thank you very much. I will read uh, two poems in my own language and two poems in English. Those, uh, these poems in English were translated by uh, Colombian poet Nicolas Suescun uh, maybe 15 years ago. And the poems I would read in Spanish haven't been translated yet, but I, I feel like reading them today for the Spanish audience and because they haven't been published um, yet. So, Diciembre. Y no ha sido este dolor lo que yo digo la fallida pretensión de amar ni la conciencia de no decir amor como es debido o sencillamente amar. No ha sido este dolor tan meditado, tan vano, que un día balbuceó mi nombre para advertirme con algo de cautela. Acude, corre, vuela, traspasa, atestigua la vida entera, aprovecha que es diciembre. No ves que aquí nada se marchita en esta época del año. ¿Dónde la fatiga? Si todo es pura brisa, si el color se desborda en cada jardín de la ciudad. Los corazones solos esconden sus ojos del día y de la noche para abrir sus cuerpos dóciles a esto que llamamos la alegría. Así que hoy nos prometemos Lo haré contigo y contigo sin desamparo alguno hasta alcanzar el río para reconocer involuntarios el ritmo que nos donó el Caribe. Este ritmo mira nada más el agua, observa cómo navegan las tarullas despreocupadas de la tierra, se sobrecogen y se desperezan para seguir lentamente el curso. Mira el agua. Algunas ceden el paso a las canoas y a los buques, dejando un reguero de flores entre sus desordenados bulbos, mientras el color que parece una violeta se acerca hacia la orilla. Así que no ha sido este dolor lo que yo digo. En la brevedad del goce yo sonrío. Es este otro que pareciera tan antiguo, tan grande, que no pasa, que me pesa y me desvergüenza en la melancolía. Amando como a mí, tan perturbada como tú y como tú, al comprender la muerte en el amor los días de los que ya no pueden abrazar ningún dolor. Por extraño que parezca, todo es tan ancho ahora. Ok. This is a, one of the poems translated by Nicolas Wesco, Walt Whitman. Because at some point he mentioned frontiers, knowing that frontiers do not exist and that nothing was certain, not even simple, non-existent things 
I celebrate Walt Whitman and I lose myself in his voice because it's easier to know his near to be able to abandon him, inventing another dialogue of forthcoming aban abandonments or proximities more fitting to the celebration of time. Song of, my, of himself, I sing myself and take possession of myself, of those who come because you asked for it and I believe in myself and, I, and in my time of pain, sorrow and death and in the sovereign future of the many lives I will not live. I am not original as you said and I shall never be either because it means nothing because we talk about the sea and touch the sea and travel to the sea because everything is dryness and we see what we can of the past and the present because we didn't know the true river or the real man and we jumped into the manor and built on it because we throw these courses onto the wet earth and onto the dry earth and we ask ourselves questions so we can think about time because time disturb, disturbs us. I am saying it so you can celebrate it. Incorrigible melody. We, you touch my ear, although I didn't ask it. I have always known it and it does not make me happy. You attained happiness by inviting your sound to observe a leaf of grass in summer. We observe the leaves in only one season and we are blind to mystery. We don't have your assurance, Walt Whitman. We have outdone you in death. Okay, this is a poem to George Bakovia, a Romanian a poet, dedicated to him. Bakovia. Night's body goes to bed slowly in the shadows, the taverns shout, I fall. And just a single word in the air which is suddenly a circle of birds stains my memory. Bakovia, poet, I read you horrid, sunless, uncontrollable. Long ago, you taught me a sadness of gloomy laughter and a dampness I found only in your perpetually scarce trees that warned me of danger. Pondering on it from this rum tropic of myth and scraps of trash, I got lost in Romania in that strange winter. How could I guess that I would later confuse myself with you in the mirror? centuries of sun, a line of light in the sand, Barranquilla buried in a corner of laughter and dance, nothing forgotten, everything conclusive, hence your crystal ravens and vultures perched eternally on every page, on every text, on every solitude of mine corrected a thousand and one times. George Bakovia, I would like to repeat into this sky on this page that describes every final stage, the history of a poet or the outburst of an orchestra affecting my senses every night a crazy grace or a slight grace for life. 
Sorry. Okay, the last one. Entre la sombra, el canto. Y he aquí que hoy Roque Dalton no asesinaron al cisne. A eso de las siete se llenaron las tribunas y nuestros cuerpos se plantaron como árboles en turbulencia y en sosiego. No asesinaron al cisne. Fuimos riego de luz por un instante o jarasca o sabía atrevimiento, un exceso de realidad por centenares que supo flotar en el silencio y duele, porque todo ha sido palabra tachadura, la persecución, el crimen, la masacre, cenizas pasajeras que se juntan, se dispersan para perderse en lo más ancho del tiempo, en el olvido. Lo que quedó de un hombre perseguido por las sombras somos, lo que quedó de las madres tras los huesos de sus hijos, vertidas ellas en el mar que nos extiende o en la celeridad del río, somos, somos lo que pasó y está pasando todavía. Pero entonces leímos, sus estertores anegan de suciedad los trajes de los transeúntes y lo supimos, fuimos la misma llaga antigua y nueva, el barro, el animal fundido ya en el tronco mientras la hora hacía maravillas. Oh luz iluminada que hoy pareces tan nueva, que tu silencio no ensordezca a los verdugos que confusos de vivir se plieguen solemnes en la plaza que sus manos penetren los corredores de los árboles y excaven la memoria toda antes de que este claro de luna disipe tu nombre, Roque Dalton, y borre las tinieblas de la noche. Thank you very much. Alula, muchas gracias. You are brilliant. Your poetry is very expressive, sometimes chaotic, but always impeccable. I really love it. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well, now we present the Colombian artist, Luis David Ocasio, who may be heard on YouTube as Medina YouTube. Hello, Medina, are you here? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm glad. I'm so glad to be here, here with you guys, and and I'm happy for tourism. Uh, I, to me, it's an honor to be with you, and and this place is a like a paradise. I'm in Puerto Colombia, and in, if you can see this side, it's like a mountain, and and the other side is the sea and the beach is um, right right there so uh oh my yeah. god we want to be here huh we did oh <laughs> uh, i got uh, some songs for you uh, uh, some covers and the other songs mine so uh this song uh, uh, I've been called uh, the only sun in Spanish, el único sol. I uh, hope you enjoy. Este sol de Barranquilla. Ah, ah, ah. Este sol de Barranquilla, no. Hermosa baja que me derrito, y no es por ti, no es por ti, no. El único sol que quiero sobre mí, yo sé detrás de esa puerta, 
El único sol que lo sobre mí se encuentra detrás de esa puerta. Ah, 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 ah. El único sol que quiero sobre mí se encuentra detrás de esa puerta. Ah, 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 ah. Desciende bíblicamente por la escalera. Era, era, era. Te acepto uno, dos, tres pucheros antes de bajar completamente. Me refugio en la sombra de tus ojos, la que te pones para ver mi cara de tonto. Ya no tiene alas, pero tiene el cuerpo y la cara. Ella no tiene alas, pero tiene el cuerpo y la cara. Ah, 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 ah. Hermosa baja que me derrito Y no es por ti, no es por ti, no El único sol que quiero sobre mí Se encuentra detrás de esa puerta El único sol que quiero sobre mí Se encuentra detrás de esa puerta ah, 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 ah. Este sol de Barranquilla, no. Este sol de Barranquilla, ey. This is the first song. Um, second song uh, is a cover by Jason Imbras. Uh, this one is and yours, maybe you know.
the song, uh, her name is uh, I Find You. En español es Te Encontré. Esta canción, this song is not mine, it's a cover. So I hope you enjoy. Te encontré, la encontré, la mujer que por tanto tiempo había esperado. Y no sé si creer, si en verdad existe o estoy alucinando. No hace falta besos a la paz que te hace el ángel que Dios me mandó para que me cuidara y a que saca y después en tu cinturita, sus ojitos tan bonitos. Hace sentir el dueño del mundo Ay, 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 que lo quería Que yo me enamoraría así Y es por ti que hago lo que sea vida mía Porque me has cambiado Y la da dolor a mi vida Definitivamente que tú estoy enamorado y no hay nadie que me contradiga. Gracias a Dios que me mandó. Le va a dar sentido a mi vida. Ella es, ella es, ella es. Realmente el amor de mi vida. Encontré, ya encontré la mujer que por tanto tiempo había esperado. Y no sé si creer, si en verdad existe o estoy alucinando. No hace falta besos a la pa' que ella es el ángel que Dios me mandó para que me cuidara. Te encontré. The next song is uh, is, uh, is mine. Uh, I can call it the Aphrodite. Aphrodite. Pero se me ha jugado mal Te ves como un error Y tan cansado de pensar No llegué sin avisar Me enredé en un aquelar Brujas besan las huellas Las que hay aquella Tú eres otra ella Juro que yo no era así. Juro que yo no era así. Tras de ti lo jodieron todo. Y no es excusa, pero ya no lo controlo. Me mira como si estrenara ojos. Le pido que se marche, se lo imploro. Ella dice que no va a dejarme subir. 
Besan las huellas, las que ha dejado que ya tú eres otra de ella. La Afrodita de cristal. Me ha jugado mal, te ves como un error. Yo tan cansado de pensar, no llegué sin avisar. Wow. Thank you so Thank you. much, Medina. Beautiful voice. Thank you. Uh, thank you for, uh, for the invitation, for with me. Uh, uh, and how I say in the, in the press, uh, I'm so happy to be here. So thank you for the invitation. Thank you so much. Uh, Manuel, Talula, Carolina, Medina, this is for you. Thank you for sharing your magic with us. So George, back to you. All right, thank you so much. Again, if everyone would take off your mute for a second, let's hear a warm round Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I just want to interject here that um, you know, we're going to be having a lot of uh, uh, poetry over the next five sessions after this in two languages, you know, so Spanish and English, of course, um, you know, it's beautiful to hear everybody's work in Spanish as well as in English. And, you know, I would like to express gratitude to everybody who's going to be and who was read today in their own language and also in English for your uh, <coughs> Your, the, the quality of your performance in English as well, we in America. You know, most of us speak one language well, and that's about it. So in England, you know, that's your native language, so it makes sense. But for us, you know, we are so glad to hear the uh, poetry written in your own language and appreciate your using English to join us in this. So thank you for that. Okay. Good, so now we have heard from Suffolk, England. We've heard from several locations, including a gorgeous beachside, mountainside location in Colombia. And we're gonna hear from, you know, cold Northeast uh, United States now. I don't know how it is in Philly right now for you, Joe, but uh, it hasn't warmed up yet here in uh, New York City. So we're gonna start right off with the go-to guy for New York City poetry uh, reading events as the open, opening uh, person for events. Chicago, Cleveland, Kent State, Philadelphia, New York's Joe Ordy. Thank you, George. Thank you. Thank you, everyone who's read. Uh, read in, uh, saying uh, wonderful, wonderful program. Sing song, the inarticulate music of children, the way they sang when the Tower of Babel fell and in the rubble, some pile rock on rock as a child piles word on word, sound on sound, thought on thought. What is left in the rubble? An undefeated music. Bombardment. That's what God did when people displeased him. When in their pride, they built something for themselves, skywards. 
a threat. Maybe it was. Maybe it still is. Once there was a man who built a shack by a pond. There he wrote and thought and watched. The waters of the pond ripple and the trees surge, the sun that rises and falls. He even watched as darkness fell across the water and deep into the pines. The shack where he lived was raised, as often happens to shacks and even greater dwellings in the course of time. Now people come to where that shack was and pile stones, small monuments to that writing and thinking and watching. Sing song, what people do in the wake of gods and tyrants and time itself inarticulate in the face of hate and fear and folly, one thing upon another. Thank you. Rain breaks hard and loud. Uh, I should say, Sheets is a chain of gas stations here in the United States. Rain breaks hard and loud. I saw Satan. He was pumping gas at Sheets. I said, I didn't think you needed gas. He said, I don't, but I have to get out of the rain. When it rains, when rain breaks hard and loud, over the head of anyone, even the king of hell, must find shelter. Even the foulest shit can be washed clean by a hard rain. And then where would I be? This palace of concrete, plastic, and glass, and the stench of gasoline fills me with a power to make the innocent bleed. It's, but this goddamn brain, it's senseless purity, like belief with nothing to believe, that fills its senselessness with drumming thunder. I pray to the rain. I pray to it to stop. And Satan laughed. And Satan laughed. And Satan laughed. And Satan laughed. I asked him, how long are you going to keep standing there with that hose in your hand? As long as it rains, there will be a world. I'll stop when the rain does. Thank you. Rorty, Joe Rorty, thank you very much. Thank you, George, and thank you, everyone. I see Tommy said Toriello is taking his headphones off. Joining us from Northport is just fabulous musician from New York City and <clears throat> New York, greater New York City area. He's worked with us a number of times at the Wilmer Birthplace. Please welcome Tommy Thomas Santoriello. Mic off, microphone. I'm not hearing.
Now a voice is not on. No. That's on you. Try again. Megan, any clues here? Tommy, I'm sorry, we're not hearing you yet. The sound check was fine earlier. Maybe when you put your headset on, you change the setting somehow. We're gonna give you a chance to test that and we'll come back to you. Okay, Tommy, if you can see if you can figure it out while we get somebody else on. <laughs> yes, okay. That's what we're gonna do. Dorothy Cantwell is next, also from uh, New York City. I'll tell you very briefly about uh, Dorothy. She's worked as an educator, actor, and playwright. Work's been published. Brownstone Poets Anthology, Patricia Carrigan is here from them. Constellate Literary Journal, Flash Boulevard. That's uh, Francine Witt, she's here. Assisi River, Assisi River and South Review, Angel City Review, Poetry Bay, that's me and others. T Dorothy's a, a regular participant in uh, poetry events in Parkside Lounge and other locations in New York City. Dorothy Cantwell, welcome. Thank you, George. And what a wonderful uh, event this has been. I wanna thank everybody who's read and, and tell you how moved I am by the beauty and the power of your words and the music. And um, again, thank you, George, for, for inviting me to be a part of this. I have three poems um, uh, and I'll start with uh, one that George published in Poetry Bay. And this is called The Sleeping Giant Lies in a Purple Dream. <clears throat> the sleeping giant lies in a purple dream and were he to stir would wake to a scarlet sky and a fierce blood red gash on the horizon. The clouds are so low they cast shadows upon the sea. White crested waves race in from the west and north and hurl themselves like maddened warriors at the broken bulkhead. A sudden shaft of light angles through a split in the clouds and falls across the dark water like an emerald sword. I cry out as if to summon the harbor seals back for their winter visit and listen for their harsh, elated barks. But wild spray crashes over the rocks that await their return. The wind whips by and spirits my voice into the churning sky. Fire carved, a burning cave of ashes, now cold behind the grate where death curls like a sleeping serpent satisfied with its kill. From the deep water, he groans and rises to rage in the storm-tossed chaos, lashes my face with icy shards of fury and tears at my hair with frenzied, salt-scarred fingers as if to drag me into its tides. Oh, drowned warrior shout, armorless as he sinks beneath the wave, sorrow drenched and tumbling in its confusion and no way is up. Um, thank you. Uh, the next poem is called Aklis at the Altar. Um, and Aklis is a primordial spirit in Greek mythology that represents or is identified as the goddess of misery and uh, sorrow. And uh, I've tried to use the description of her that I found, um, but I've also tried to incorporate images from other cultures because every culture has a woman deity that either uh, embodies or absorbs the misery and sorrow of the world. So I'm trying to put it all in there. And I met them, her, in Union Square, New York City. Aklis at the altar, Union Square, New York City. 
on her knees in Union Square on a small patch of dirt and grass. Once beautiful, once young, ageless now, she is gaunt, tall, fragile, hollowed with heart hunger. Her hair wild and tangled, her face ravaged by despair, rocking, swaying, keening, praying to a small altar she has built of twigs and trash and a small worn blue square of silk. Incense burns from two sticks placed like torches in the ground. She entreats, pleads to a small invisible deity with a desperate worship. Her face changes as if wooing a lover, now addressing a small child with rueful tolerant smiles and gasps of wonder, now weeping tears of torment, tearing at her hair and draping torn tresses on the altar, savaging her skin with nails grown long in skeletal fingers, and now again, gentle murmurs and whispered prayers. Her hands of sorrow like pale birds hover and swoop in the air before her and come to rest on her heart. This in the middle of the mad city, people rushing to errands at lunch, tossing wrappers into overflowing trash cans, cigarettes to the ground, teenagers smoking pot and skateboarding with sudden percussions, anarchists conferring over leaflets and wandering with angry eyes, and the homeless like sleeping mountains along the benches. Spellbound, I watch her lost in my own despair and pulled into the vortex of hers as she blocks the sun, swaying above me like a wild willow with 1,000 imploring arms. Oh, and she brings me along like a song. She despairs, I follow. She loves, I follow. She hates and my fury is inflamed. She hopes and I believe. I follow, 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 and I'm folded into the dark reverie, swept under by the wave of her holy madness. Of course, the questions. What could have brought her here and so tormented that I think to offer mortal help? Her bags lie at her side, the last possessions of a refugee. And what should I do? Call 911 and see her torn from her incantations, her sacred sanity shattered, ushered by sirens to a sterile hospital room, or told to move along by weary and jaded police? Should I capture her spirit on my iPhone and use it as a Vimeo? or a multimedia background to a performance piece, or as an image to begin a poem? Or should I remain devoted and grateful as her wails subside, as she gathers her altar and bags and leaves me in the dust, muddy with tears, awaiting solace? And, uh, Thank you. I, I will end with a short poem uh, called Prayers, of Prayers at Sunrise. The world is too beautiful for someone like me, who after so many days still doesn't know the name of the bird that rouses me each morning with a loopy coil of sound, or what the break of a new day means to the trilling songs that sound like joy which is maybe the natural state for wild things waking, who greet the dawn with praise and are not cluttered with tangles of irrelevant fretting. My ingratitude shames me and I mourn all the sunrises that I have missed and will miss in this all too short life I am blessed with. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Dorothy Carewell, thank you so much, Dorothy. Very passionate. Beautiful. Audrey so, Payne and passion, wonderful poem, says Carol Lawrence. Now, let's try Tommy Santoriello again. Tommy, How about yes. All yeah. right. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do a song. That was beautiful, Dorothy. Uh, a, a blues tune that was written in 1950 by a guy named Percy Mayfield, which is uh, very fitting for this time. It is a, a song in the guise of a prayer. 
uh, called Please Send Me Someone to Love. Heaven, please send to all mankind understanding and peace of mind but if it's not asking too much please send me someone to love someone to love show the world how to get along Peace will enter when hate is gone. But if it's not asking too much, please send me someone to love. Someone to love. I lie awake at night to find the world in so much trouble. You know my answer, it's always the same. Unless man put an end to this damnable sin, hate's gonna put the world in a flame. Well, what a shame, just because I in misery I don't beg for no sympathy but if it's not asking too much please send me someone to love someone to love Did that come through? <laughs> Did that come through? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, did that come through? I think so, loud and clear. So that's somebody to love. We love each other here. Yes. Poets building bridges today. With six minutes left, I want to ask you all to unmute yourselves one more time to give a round of applause to those people from New York City who performed with us today. Tommy Santoriello, Dorothy. Oh. Yeah, well, Joe Rorty. Yeah. Right. Thank you all. Now, because of the miracle of the internet, we have the opportunity to just to hear a taste of what's going to be coming next. We have one of the performers in the future uh, future shows. She's going to read us a poem right now, something maybe two minutes long. Francine Witt, but let me just before she comes on tell you that we are on 10 to 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll be making up Robert Gibbons, who unfortunately, because of my bad, thought it was 10 p.m. tonight, so he's on a train or in a subway somewhere in New York City. Could not join us as was scheduled, but will be with us at a future time. So in the meantime, if you would just put, uh, put your stuff on mute again, and let's hear a foretaste of a future meeting from Francine Wade. Francine, you there? Yes, I am. Thank you, George. Um, it's really nice to be here, and thank you for just asking me. Um, I'm going to read a, a, a poem that George actually published in um, the, uh, the Long Islander in his column, Walt's Corner. So um, it's called, I Look to the North, where cold used to be guaranteed, where the ice holds on, but only for now. When I was a kid, the Arctic was a long white page, unworded and hushed. But now, each day, the ice splits, forming new coastlines, jagged as, as bare teeth, open to the blue surprise of ocean underneath. My mother used to say you needed change in order to grow. And maybe the earth is turning adult, and one day soon, 
it will be meeting the other planets for coffee, all of them heaving a sigh of relief about the rash of humans the Earth used to have. Thank you. That's in with. So, on behalf of the Walt Whitman Birthplace, who is our host today, I would like to thank Ian Griffiths with his um, compadres from uh, East Anglia, Ivor Morell, Alexandra Davis, and Nick Stone. I'd like to thank Maria Della Castillo Susakia from Barquia with her friends and colleagues from South America, Carolina Zamudio, Tallulah Flores, Manuel Iris, or Iris, I'm sorry if I said that wrong, and Luis Medina, and from New York City, myself, Joe Rorty, Robert Gibbons next time, Dorothy Cantwell, and Tommy Santoriello, with a special fortes from Francine Wood. I wanna thank you all for joining us, helping all of us to build bridges to each other today. Hope you'll join us tomorrow, March 6th, for Bulgaria, Georgia, and the United States, and in future Saturdays and Sundays for other you know, very fine uh, international collaborations. Thank you all for joining us, and uh, have a great Saturday. I know how much uh, it meant to you to be able to be here um, a Saturday morning like this. So thanks again. Over to you. Otherwise, uh, Ken, Ken, Megan, Ken, otherwise Ken, we'll Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Joy. Thank you, Joy.